Greetings all, BWS2K here. I've been making uh, short videos, helpful videos lately, just short and sweet things that can be shared around and help inform or at least serve as a basis to ask more questions. And something that a lot of people will ask is, what do we use for character sheets in Cortex Prime? There isn't a straightforward answer because every game is going to be different. Every build is going to be different. So your character sheets are necessarily going to look different game to game. Um, but one of the tools uh, that I use most frequently, which is, I don't even know that it's the most popular. I know other people use other uh, platforms, but I like Google the Google Drive uh, suite, which really for, for our intents and purposes is just the Google Sheets portion. So in, in Google Sheets, this is a setup that I used to run the uh, Lost Oasis uh, module for Tales of Zadia. Um, and I, I really was proud of how this all worked out. It was a great game and the, the players all did really well. Um, but I, I typically will set my games up in this fashion. I'll have a cover page, which in this case is locked. And this will be where I'll post uh, if there's like uh, a list of things that I want to cover for next session, or there are important announcements, or even just putting the date that we're going, the, the next session date on here. Because you can share these uh, with the link that's up in the corner. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see. There we go. You can see my cursor now. With this link up here, you can share it uh, to anybody. And so they'll be able to see everything here and you can make it so that they can edit, which is what I do for my players so they can track things on their own sheets. But you can see here, this is my cover sheet. I have this sort of introduction and literally my instructions because I forget things during play. Um, after reading the above introduction to the, the module, uh, then I would ask the players to explain how their characters came to be where they are. Um, and this is the cast of characters for this particular game. These are the shots from there. All of this stuff is free resources. It's a free module uh, on the main, um, actually it's not on the main website, it's on the uh, Tales of Zadia website, but the, um, which can be linked from, I think the, uh, the main Cortex website. But these are the pictures. I just took them off the PDFs and put them there just kind of at a glance. Um, and then that particular module has kind of a, a route, sort of a rough structure to follow. So I put that here. It's set up as a tutorial, and I remember saying to the players, let's try to stick as best we can to these um, rails. You know, I, I use that term with caution, but that idea of, of not going sandbox for the purposes of learning the system. Um, the note here, um, when it comes up to helping others, was helpful to have there, because that's one of the questions that I experience a lot or, or get a lot when I'm running Zadia. Right here, you can see I have the link to script change, which is the um, safety tools that we used, and then other things I wanted to talk about, my sort of basic uh, session zero explanation. And then down here is how to roll dice We're using Cortex PAL 2000 on the Discord. So I actually had screenshots there so that people can see you type this and it pops up a menu and it, then you type in, you click that and then you type in the dice ratings and then you press enter. I typically don't care if people roll on their own. Um, I don't mind that being an option, but when it's teaching somebody new, then it's best to have their dice out on the table where everybody can see so everybody can be helping. All right, so that's kind of my cover sheet. Again, there's no hard and fast rule about what goes on this, but I like to have the first sheet be uh, the, any basic information that every player is going to need to know up front that I can use sort of as the cover page week to week, I can change it. All right, then I have my GM screen, which again, everybody can see and that's fine. But I actually got pretty fancy. I put the uh, the catalyst characters, there's two catalyst characters, and um, the notes about how to earn plot points and spend plot points. Again, a reminder on the how to help others thing. And then up here, I've got three links, I've got a link to the primer for the um, Tales of Zadia. And then, yeah, that's the, the website, talesofzadia.com. And then a link to the resources, which is the page that has the things to download, and then the module link to the actual module. Up here in this top row, I have players put their own names and pronouns. Underneath is the individual uh, characters. And then underneath that is how many plot points they have and their stress. The reason I do it this way is because if you put in this field, what it says up here, I don't know how well you can read that, but it says equals Diane exclamation point B4. That field will say, will display whatever is in on Diane's page in B4, which is this rating right here. So if we change the D0 to D4, I know we don't use D4 in Zadie, but that's okay. It's just an example. If we come back to the screen, I would see that the player changed their stress. So I don't have to go page to page. And the same thing over here, Eljal's player uh, only had had to used up their plot point 
And so it was reflected here. So I don't have to, as the GM, go page to page to page to see what everybody has stress-wise. This block right here is the challenge field and it works the opposite way. Whatever I type here shows up on each individual character sheet. So you can see up here that it says equals screen, which is the name of that page, exclamation point E20, which is that field right here, E20. Um, I also put the stuff about plot points, the links, and this is all from the uh, character sheet for this character. Nothing here is like customized or anything like that. Uh, change that back. So this is a sort of a high speed way of doing things, but it made it so much smoother to run. Now I had to invest a bit of time because I had to copy in all of the distinctions and, and the trait statements and everything. But this is something I can use over and over and over again. And I don't have to do anything except I think some of the characters near the end. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I haven't finished all of the characters because I was in a rush. Uh, and then I have a blank version. But so you can just do this. And if you need to make a new page, there's an add sheet uh, down here and you add a sheet and it's brand new. You can copy paste, um, come over here on this sheet and you can just go delete. Uh, but if I needed to, I can take this blank sheet and I can duplicate it and I can rename it uh, new character. And now I have a new character sheet and I can scoot those around and re reorder them. And then when I don't need it, I can delete it and we're good. Um, what else about this? Uh, the only thing obviously missing from this is dice rolling, which would again be done. We used a discord. You could do it at home. You could use any, anything you wanted to do for a dice roller, but other than a dice roller, everything that I need my players to see and everything that I need to see from my players uh, is set up here. Now, obviously you don't have to go this advanced. You don't have to have the fields referencing each other. It was just easy for me to do. And I wanted to kind of do it as a personal challenge, but in a more general sense, you can set up any kind of a character sheet in uh, Google sheets and have them just be static things. And then you can flip through them and that's fine. What I did, um, actually, yeah, let me, let me pause. Okay, so if we look at another example, this is uh, an MHR game that I am running currently, although it's on hold for the holidays. Um, here's my front page. I have table rules for the event, so I actually have sort of some SFX that are always in, in effect. Uh, some example milestones, not example milestones, but um, event milestones, and then uh, some uh, unlockables as well. So that's my front page, and that's kind of always the same, although to be fair, we've we have finished the first act, so some of this is going to change. I'll add and, and edit and things like that once I set it up for the second act. My table view is just this. Nothing here is uh, like connected the way that the fields in the other one are updated. So if somebody types something on their sheet, nothing shows up for me. It's all just per page. There's no fancy back and forth. But I have tokens here that you can drag around. Um, and anybody can do that. Anybody who has editing, editing permission to the document can do that. So that's how I track turns, right? I've got a divider here, everyone over here, and then I move them over here when they've gone, and then we move back. Uh, in this case, Dr. Strange wasn't in this session, so I just moved his token down. Then there's the individual character sheets. Again, players can edit these and do whatever. Um, I did put links, I think, though they may have edited, yeah, like there's the link to script change, but, but the players may have um, changed them around and that's fine too. The, the cool thing about this or, or what I was trying with this is one thing you can do is export a page. So if I go to this and I go to copy to new spreadsheet, it'll create a new Google sheet document using this page. If I do existing spreadsheet, I can copy this page to another document. So if I go existing spreadsheet, and then I go, uh, what is that one called? Fancy Lost Oasis. Copy, we want the copy. And I go, okay, and then I come over here to the copy of this, and I go, I think it's gonna be all the way in the end. Oops, wrong button. Yep, copy of table view is the last sheet here, and it copies over the images. So I was, very excited to give that a shot and see how that works. I don't need that anymore. Because what I did was I had a separate document, which was a copy of this. 
these are this is just the blank character sheet by the way um, but I, I have a, a separate copy of this page on a separate document and I was filling it out and then exporting the pages to this document which was kind of clunky but it was essentially a way for me to prep stuff and then introduce it and then what I realized was if you copy paste the only thing that doesn't go with you is the tokens the, the images so I have another document where I will write up everything that goes in here, and then I'll just copy it from that document and paste it into this document. So uh, I have another document that has uh, the Incredible Hulk, Hulk Spiders, and, and Hulk's power set. When the players first started the session, this was blank. I, I mean, the Doom Pool stuff was there, but, but most of this was blank. So all I do is just make note of the Doom Pool, fill it in on my GM sheet, and then I copy that whole thing and paste it right over all of this content. So it updates the fields and resizes them and all that kind of stuff. So that's th there's a lot of different ways depending on how, how preppy you want to get and how uh, complex you want to get. But there are ways to use Google Sheets that are very simple, very straightforward. And because you can have as many sheets as you want and because you can share it to anyone and because you can put editing um, per permission on there for anybody who has the link, players can update their own pages and so you can just be focused on the pages that you need to be focused on so i like it it's uh it's nothing fancy there's no dice roller but i like using google sheets for these um uh games that i run online largely because they are so easy to share and easy to edit and easy to change and prep and copy around and things like that and then you can get more fancy and do the updating stuff. All right, so um, a little bit longer than my more recent videos, but nonetheless, uh, still pretty short and sweet compared to my usual <laughs> my usual size of videos. Um, if you have any questions, comments, observations, let me know in the comments if there's anything you want to see me cover in another Cortex Explanations video, which uh, those are genuinely inspired by people just asking questions. Hey, it'd be helpful to have a video on this. It'd be helpful to have a video on that. All right, I'll whip one up. Sometimes there's not much to it, but um, if you have uh, any ideas, uh, definitely let me know there or over in the Discord if you're in the Cortex Discord. I think that's all I have for today. Uh, yeah, that's it. Excelsior.